Hello there. Um, this is uh, Sean B.W. Parker for Empowering the Innocent TV and for False Allegations Watch. And uh, this week, we're talking to a very special guest, uh, Margaret Gardiner, um, who is, was the the founder of FASO, the Falsely Accused Support Organization. Um, she knows much more about this subject, obviously, than I do, though I'm very kind of closely attached to it, having met Margaret in um, 2018 at the start of my own experience in this whole world. And she was a wonderful pen pal in one of the most difficult times of my life. And um, she, she actually does what she says she's going to do. And that's not always very common. And um, so here we are on this kind of part of uh, the false allegations story. Um, she knows the whole thing from beginning to end. Like a lot of the people watching this, we don't doubt that. And um, that's why she's so interesting to have on Empowering the Innocent ch ch channel, um, because she's seen it all and done it all and knows exactly w where we are still. And the light is still fierce. Um, hi, Margaret. Hi, Sean. No, I haven't seen it all. I haven't done it all. But there's a heck of a lot that I have actually done and seen and we don't have a justice system we have an injustice system mm -hmm. and i started back in 2002 when i joined FASO. it had only been going about 18 months um six people from um the AFA group um i can't remember what it stands for but they started it and i took over because everybody re resigned from the group so I've been in it, as you said, from the start. And I didn't know what the plans were to take it forward. So I just took it my way, which was voluntary. So all of us that work for FASO, they don't, we don't work, we volunteer. None, none of us have been paid ever. Um, and so we appear for you that have been falsely accused, not, not just you that um, are actually the accused, but also for your families and your friends. You know, we're at the end of the telephone, at the end of the email. Um, and I do local, in fact, I've done one this past week. I meet people locally that either are going to court so I can support them in court, or they just need a chat because of what they're going through. And so I meet them in public spaces and hopefully, what I talk about, I don't do the talking, they talk, and I try and answer them and support them. And of course, Sean, you you know the way I do it. Um, and there are several videos out there um, where I've already spoken at length about um, FASO and what we do uh, to this men's psychology group in London. And uh, they videoed my talk. And it's the best talk I gave. I'm really chuffed with it. But that's only part of it, you see. We we not just only support you that are falsely accused of sex offences, but those accused of child protection issues as well. And that's another whole ball game. Um, and I have been in so many different types of places with both um, sex allegations and youngsters um, being damaged according to the social services by the parent and it's nothing to do with the parent because they've got underlying medical problems and they have not chosen to get them tested neither has the doctors tested them prior to the parents being taken away from or well, the child taken off the parent so you know yeah. uh, we cover an awful lot of stuff no absolutely yeah um... You do indeed. Um, so if um, if a person kind of defines themselves in the awful position of being falsely accused or a person that they know well, which is almost a bit more common, isn't it, kind of coming through, uh, a person, that, a loved one, um, what can they expect if they call you, if they, if they email you or anything else like that? What actually happens to them? What do you do with them? Well, I answer their questions. And that's, they're the lead. They ask what they want to, and I try and give them sensible answers. It's not always what they want, but it's the truth. 
Um, I am careful, though. It depends on what stage they're at, how badly they have been affected, because there are some people that are very good um, and have, are very strong. It's not that they don't care. It's just that they're strong. So I can speak to them slightly different to somebody that's really going through it, has um, mental health problems, um, parents that are, are supporting their children even. Um, our, the youngest one we've had is an 11-year-old, but obviously through the parent. And so um, parents of children are really upset. Um, also, uh, those that have got disabilities, they it's it's it comes off the hoof. What you ask, I try and give you an honest answer, and I'm careful in how I do it, so I don't make you more distressed. Um, yeah. And I hope that was reflected in our correspondence, Sean. You know. Oh. Um, so yeah. yeah, that's that's all I can say because I don't know. I just do it automatically. And oh, yeah. so many people come back and say, um, uh, thank you, because you've at least enlightened me on the way forward. They said a bit more than that, but <laughs> I well, don't like saying things. <laughs> that's 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 the key thing because um uh, it's it's actually kind of quite there in prison. The pamphlet there of for Faso is um one of the first things that comes to to your hand because there's the Samaritans there's all these various things in there and what you actually want is I shouldn't be here what's happened what's gone wrong here how can I start to work on this and then there's this well this looks interesting and those words make sense falsely accused support organization and then so but there's not a lot in there because it's almost like the Ministry of Justice the prisons consider you for face so the falsely accused kind of society in general movement to be an enemy on the wrong side like an opposition is that correct it seems to be because if you go to the police station initially um you've been interviewed hopefully you've had a solicitor with you but then you're given paperwork to suggest that you are a paedophile or that you are a sex offender and here are the organizations you can talk to to help you with that particular problem. They have not got our paperwork, um, our leaflet, to say, right, well, you have, you're saying that you're innocent and you're, you haven't done it. Well, here are a couple of organizations, because there are a couple of us, um, organizations that you can talk to. And we don't do anything for people. We do not try and get them telling lies or things like that. We just support them. And that's mm. what is wrong in, in at the beginning. There should be paperwork there to say, right, here are a couple of the organisations that um, can support you, given that the accuser has all the support in the world, has the money given to them, Whereas the accused has absolutely nothing. And because the accuser has to be believed, they are the accuser. Well, if you said somebody's an accuser, obviously the accused must be guilty. And so from the very get-go, it's very um, one-sided. Yeah, it's the wrong frame, isn't it? Or it's its own frame sort of thing everybody's framed inside that somehow um it's it, it isn't so, uh, just you is it there's there's some other people inside face so as well aren't there like kind of, kind of helping you out um oh is yeah that no 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 this, yeah well you're one of them as well um but no it's not just me it's never been me alone it's um i'm just a, i'm just a spokesperson uh, because yeah. most people do not want to be identified by picture um, which is perfectly understandable because we that deal with this sort of issue can get brickbats. You know, we can get um, attacked verbally um, in any which way, or your neighbours can learn who you are and what's, you know, what's been going on in your situation. I've got to the point, um, my husband died in prison uh, 
<laughs> sorry, maintaining its innocence. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, you can't get any worse than that. So I don't mind. Uh, because if I hadn't spoken out, it um, nobody would have known about it. And if you look over the um, internet and my interviews previously, you'll find that um, Andrew, that's just been released, is saying exactly what I've been saying over the years. Anonymity, proper investigations, um, yeah. etc. cetera. He, I tell you what, he's done a really good job for the falsely accused. And given yeah. he's done so many years, he's really kept his cool. Absolutely, absolutely, Margaret. Um, oh, oh sorry. Um, just to uh, some issues here. Excuse me. Um, we're talking about Mr. Andy Malkinson, aren't we? So, yeah. um, who uh, just kind of for, for for the benefit of the viewers who aren't aware, not, not that there's anyone in the UK who aren't, but Andy Malkinson was inside for 17 years, kind of wrongfully convicted of the rape of a person in 2003, picked him out of an identity parade and was falsely um, identified, always maintained his innocence. He's one of many. His case was very serious. So that, that's two facts. So not, not that every case isn't serious, but his was particularly, um, you know, pretty grim and, and is, a, is a long time inside. And he's just kind of come out off the back of appeal with the help of appeal. And now he's being very public and very helpful. Alex Chalk, the new Justice Secretary, right now appears to be doing a very good job. You're shaking your head. Just to give give uh, the audience a frame of Andy Malkinson, just in case. What would you like to say about Andy again and Alex Chalk, possibly? Well, Andy's doing the right things, and I'm surprised he's managed to keep his head together as such, because not only do I do uh, false allegations of sex abuse and child protection issues, but I'm also in the whole arena of miscarriage of justice. So I know people that came up out in about 2000, having done many years in prison, um, made managing to get their convictions overturned. And like Andy's done, um, he got uh, a compensation uh, after a very hard fight. He then had his bed and breakfast taken off him. And nobody really batted an eyelid when that happened. Um, even though he, he, that particular person, has been fighting all these years and he still has press conferences, which hopefully I get to when I hear about them. So um, he's not the only one. This is where Andy is not the only one in there. Um, there are an awful lot of others both sex offenders and miscarriage of justice people of all types of crimes that are just languishing in prison and the CCRC are not doing the job they were set up for, in my opinion, and in many others. And the Secretary of State refused to put the... Um, mission that was held uh, by the um, investigating the CCRC and basically where they fit the purpose and the commission came out with an awful lot of suggestions for uh, the CCRC to be made fit for purpose. I'm using fit for purpose because it's easier to say. Um, Oh, getting old, you forget your words. Um, so he refused to take that and put it to Parliament. And mm. I watched that debate, and it was as though he just shrugged it off like they all do. Oh, there's not that many false allegations. Well, there's not that many because they're not recording them. And no. they've also been told... Uh, the, the government's also told the um, CPS police, the, the police training section, told them 
that they have to believe the person making the allegation, even before checking them out. And of course, now um, the person making the allegation does not have to give up their phone. But that is part of the evidence. I mean, there was one. I thought. I, I thought. I thought that the um that that the idea to do do the, the um digital strip search thing that you're talking about. I thought that was only going to happen. I didn't think that it had happened yet. That they can't. That they still have to give the phone over. I, 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 right. Well, I'm not certain of that because I'm too busy yeah. doing other things, so I don't keep on top. So I apologise if I've got that wrong. But I don't know. I, don't I know, know that's. But even the thought of that. I mean, I was at a trial, and at the trial. Um, the uh, accuser was asked if she'd had her phone taken. The answer was no. And this is in the time when you take the accuser's phone as well. And all the evidence concurring to the person that they'd accused was in her phone. Mm -hmm. And yet the... Um, she was allowed to take her phone. This was at trial. She was allowed to take her phone out of the room. Everybody had lunch. And then it was brought back in and then taken off her, which beggars belief because she could have quite easily wiped everything off. But it wouldn't have mattered because the person that she'd accused had got the information on his mobile. But, you know, uh, that's... Uh, well, you can understand why I'm flabbergasted, as was the the defence. Yes, no, of course. Um, just thinking on, on this point, because with the um, digital strip search and the com compelling the judges to believe in rape myths, which is is another part of of the law commission's um, a consultation which is going to close at the end of September. It's a good time for this podcast. Um, that's happening very soon. And after Spacey and Malkinson put the two of them together, because Mr. Spacey is also a very important point for this country, isn't he? After those two things happening on the same day, there's this little window between them and the consultation kind of closing in September of very pro Fafeso energy out there in the country. Do you know what I mean? Yes, well, hopefully there are. It seems as though there's a window. And there's a few organisations now that are really pushing. Um, I mean, it's not just us, the volunteers. Um, there are some charities that are pushing. Appeal's brilliant. They've managed yeah. to get Andy out. Um, but it's blooming hard work, even for them. And they're legal. You know, we don't, yeah. we hardly stand a chance. But there are some small groups, and um, there's a new one called FAD, Falsely Accused Day. Um, and one of the girls that belong to FAD, the Falsely Accused Carers and Teachers group, she started up the group with the suggestion, and there's several others that have joined up with her, um, including me. Um, but I'm just there in the background because she's doing, she and um, a Lynn and Sheila are doing a really good job in getting uh, this group together and they've now made it international. So on the 9th of September, um, we're meeting uh, for, we're having a group meeting outside in London, it's outside the Scotland Yard, New Scotland Yard, and in Liverpool, it's outside HMP Liverpool. And that's, um, it's not a demonstration, but in, it's a quiet demonstration. I've lost the word for it. Um, but it's quiet uh, there. Hopefully you can come and join us um, and just stand there and be counted to support those falsely accused, either in prison, either just accused, at whatever stage they are, and don't forget, once they've come out of prison, it's extremely difficult for them to carry on with their lives as well. Um, and we yeah. also support those out, out of prison. Yeah, it's, it's a wraparound service as such, isn't it? Or kind of care anyway. Um, but what's the 
But what's the importance of of the 9th of September uh, as, as a falsely accused day? What's it's, the significance of that date? Well, it's a day, um, have I forgotten his name? One of the, it was chosen that day because it's the birthday of, you remember? Simon. Thank you, Simon Moore. Yeah, he belonged to the falsely accused carers and teachers and he was their representative and he spoke a lot um, in the media. He was a media person as well. Um, and because of, uh, this is why um, I think it's Lynn, and I'll, I'll get trouble if it's the wrong person, um, started the group, you know, well, came up with the idea and it's carried on from there. And now, this year, we've managed, well, they've managed to get it international. So there are several countries that are um, doing a similar thing in their particular country, in their particular organisation, um, marrying up with us in London and Liverpool, so that we're international now. And it's so clever of the people that are, are, are leading FAD to be able to do this. And it's the right time as well. Absolutely. So remember, yeah. support. And yeah. of course, Mike Norton's come back as well. Oh, Which one? He's one of my favourite. <laughs> ah, I think you mean... I've been around Mike Norton since, well, since I started in this uh, area. And um, he's a very charismatic speaker. And so yeah. he's carried me and... He's not actually done anything to me, but his words and meetings have really been instrumental in supporting me going through, along with, of course, Dr. Dennis Eby. Yes. My who is? Favorite ben. And he runs the Innocence Project in Cardiff University. Right, right. Absolutely. And we have to point out that um, there are two... Uh, Mike Norton's in the falsely oh, accused yeah. world in the very small pool and it's only fair to, to say that there's also Mr Mike Norton who uh, works for, for the Lewis Legal who's he's a private investigator and a professional expert witness um, so he's also out there we've got Mike and Dr Michael Norton as well from Empowering the Innocent so just just to give them their, their due as they say. Well, that's right yeah no Mike Norton um, has been used by a few people and um, the feedback is that he's good. Yes, so, indeed. Yeah. Um, it, it was interesting as we were just talking about the international nature of the Falsely Accused Day, which obviously goes hand in hand with, with the internet and social media being the good part of social media, which is getting people who have a grievance together, because when that happens, the grievance becomes less, right, as, as we all know. Um, what um, these things are happening in, in India, massively, in Spain, big time, Argentina, these are just three of where there are seem to be enormous problems. And of course, in Britain, we're very aware, and all of North America, who are very loud and used to it all, they're always astonished about Fafeso. They're like, wish we had something like that here. And I'm like, well, start one. You know, you probably heard that loads of times. Isn't it interesting that they all seem to be reporting the same problems from in the same patterns with the same kind of having to believe the victim thing. There's a political thing going on, isn't there? Let's be honest. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'm not political. I've got no political leanings. Um, but but in I terms of human with... politics. Pardon? But in terms of, of the human politics, you know, as yeah, opposed to right I, I and mean, left. I wish they would just tell the truth, listen, and make sure that it was equality in um, the justice system. It's got to be equality, because unless you get equality, you haven't got a justice system. And yeah. there's lots of foreign um, countries that are based on our justice system. And where we go wrong, they have gone wrong, or they might even be better than us because, of course, what we get is people do phone us up from abroad asking, oh, you know, can you help? But we can only deal with the UK law. But we have people that's abroad 
they get uh, still get accused by somebody in the UK, and they're extracted from abroad and brought back here to face the courts mm -hmm. and the people that are uh, accusing them. And it doesn't matter, you know, they can have, they sometimes have to come back a couple of times, but they don't get any money, for the, any help with coming back here. They have to report to the police, end of story, as far as they're concerned. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter how they get here. And um, yeah, and we get people that have in the past, not so much now, that have gone abroad and tried to hide from the courts. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah, as you said, um, people with, like in America, you get people coming. Is there an organisation here? Well, they'd have a difficulty because each state and each um, county in each state have got different rules and legislation. So how they would get together, but the Innocence Project out there, they only deal with men, people on death row and try to get their convictions overturned. It's a shame that they can't get enough people organised to run um, something along the lines of phase though in fact, and unfortunately British Force Memory Societies just recently had to close, but mm -hmm. um, you know, the three of us and a few of the other organisations, because I'm not too familiar with a, a couple of them, um, you know, if they started things up like that, they, they'd be a big help. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I guess kind of over the 21 years that you've been in charge of FASO, and uh, we've actually discussed this a little bit in um you must have seen lots of different kind of bumps and waves and kind of rushes coming in to you, um, depending on what happens in the media. Is that correct to assume that? Or is that um, because because I know at the time uh, I and a lot of other people were kind of accused during during the during the, the Me Too thing was an entirely different era from the thing back in in the North Wales thing in the late 90s, for example. And then with the Operation Midland sort of thing, and each time they have one of these pushes, you get a bunch of phone calls, don't you? Am I right in thinking that? And then it kind of goes quiet again. Or that's right. Yeah. Well, it never used to go quiet. COVID has uh, answered a lot, so we've gone quieter since COVID. But I don't think it's a case of people not being accused. I think it's a case of people being because now social media is there. There are some social media groups, and I think people are going to the social media groups rather than coming to us oh. for a sort of structured, um, you know. Oh, that's cause interesting. Because those that can, we have to check who comes to us um, and works for us because we want to protect the people that come to us, you know. So, yeah. um and if we've got rules and regulations, and if they're broken, we have to ask people to leave. And sadly, yeah. that we've had a few over the years um, uh, that we've had to ask to leave. It's a complicated business, of course, isn't it? Because because kind of so, well, um, it is, uh, it's not everyone is, is innocent. We're told, you know, people give us their hearts. Yeah, yeah, of course. But we're trusted to keep keep our mouths shut, you know. And we do, you know, us that's on the us, bad English, never mind. Um, we either are on the uh, on the end of the helpline email um, uh, and telephone, you know, we hear all sorts and we never, we're like the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. We hear, we support, but only in one particular area. You know, well, no, a couple of areas, but we've um, and we're not a general uh, run of the mill like the citizens' advice. I always say that we're a combination of um, Samaritans, citizens' advice, and there's another one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> victim support, victim support. We're right, a full combination right. of all those, um, and that's what we do. 
you know, every time somebody phones, they've got our information, their information is totally protected. And it's of course, easy. it has all those kind of safeguardings that, that one has to have to be a charity and to be like, like the Samaritans and all the rest of it. You know, there's stuff that you do that you need to do, otherwise you're not doing it correctly, absolutely. That's right. And unfortunately, we're not, we cannot be a charity because of the type of work we do. And um, of course, right. you need a lot of volunteers, and volunteers are very short in coming forward, uh, again, because of the type of work. And if people have been through the system and have had the cases dropped, they're still not in the place to do anything. It's You know, they just can't manage it, especially if they've got children as well. You know, so it's understandable, but it would be nice to have more volunteers that are genuine and um, want to help others. I mean, th th that's Absolutely. what I'm saying. Some of the social group people do, FAD does, um, and of course, a uh, few others. Yeah. Oh, it's um, uh, as, as you was you were saying earlier about the falsely accused day and um, uh, just it's not about being just recently, but there's there's a like uh, trying to put it in the best way. The fact uh, the falsely accused carers and teachers and FASO are the veterans of there are others, but these two are the big old school veterans of this world like two pillars there there's a bunch of other things there in front um at the moment on the front line doing their own special things like the unseen victims of of kind of of mols which has uh, been going for the last year up and up in her own unique way and then the false allegations forum uh dr michael and mine's sort of um idea to bring all of these things together in order that all of the different messages can somehow be funneled into the same direction as opposed to everything going out like that which has not so much of an impact so kind of culturally speaking which is what i tried to focus on like this kind of interview trying to bring all those voices into the one because we're all talking the same language it's just like i'll go on about the politics a bit more and you'll be like i i just handle the care you know and that's so valuable and so important but then we have to look at the reasons why this stuff's happening in the first place too isn't it which is you know, perhaps That's your <laughs> my, my kind of stuff, absolutely. And right. to my there, there are actually, um, um, I don't want to mention her name, but there is an individual that really is, she's been doing it as long as I have, but she actually takes people um, to the Court of Appeal. And apparently she's she tells me she's won a few cases and she's proven it, you know, um, in uh, how she uh, the the information that she provides, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, can, there's the odd one. Yeah. You can you can uh, we mention I her name if you like. like. No, because I haven't been given permission to name her. So. But it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Is it oh, good yeah, or she bad? Does, it's a marvelous <laughs> thing. Yeah. Okay, no, we'll no, just have to guess. Yeah. No, she does it. I mean, um, yeah. She really is yes, good no. because I've known her for years, and I and as I said, the evidence is there to say that she has managed to help a few people overturn their convictions. Yes, there's there's a couple out there, and they're so like um with Emily Bolton, of course, uh, who was doing the Andy case, and with the lady Sally Sarah Smart, so, someone smart, excuse me, who was the person that uncovered the forty thousand. Uh, text messages in the Liam Allen case um, because I, I we're coming to the end now but I just want to drop in um, that I remember seeing you I think in 2020 on BBC One I'm Not a Rapist uh, documentary and it was so compelling watching this thing go out on BBC and it's like wow they're actually doing uh, the, the narrative for a change and I think um, Mr Liam Allen was on there or was he I'm not yes, sure because no. he was the base he was the base um, person yeah. on that and there was four um, areas, so that he was one. Um, I didn't know um, one of them. A lady was on talking about the fact that her brother was accused when his case had dropped. Um, he was then, he then committed suicide. 
and then a year later, her mother committed suicide. Now, I met story. with those on the um, hashtag Me Too program, which was supposed to be a debate. Unfortunately, it wasn't a debate. It was no. just the uh, presenter going around asking questions. I should have been asked because I was asked to be interviewed. Um, but they didn't come to me. And when I forced my question in, I was very, sh I, it was a very sh short, I was only allowed a very short few seconds in answer, asking the question. And all you, you can see it, if you want a copy, just shout, give me a shout and I'll email you it. Um, yes. Or just... I can email it to you, actually, Sean, and then you can pass it around if you want. But, I've seen it. It's, um, it's excellent stuff. But I'm going to have to do the same thing because this is coming to an end. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, can you give give the viewers the number of for face so quickly that, that, that they can call if they want to speak to you? Do, do you want to give us that quickly? Well, I would. Would you bear? Like 10, I'm sorry, I have to look at this. Okay. Um, right. The phone number is yeah. 033 577 9377. Or Brilliant. Brilliant. That, that, that's it. It, it. It's about to go off. We can't do any more. I'm sorry, Margaret. It's about to go cling. So thank you so, so much for that. Uh, I think everyone's got that number. And, um, Hopefully, we'll be able to do this again a bit later in the year, if that's okay. Thank yes, you so much fine. for doing this. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good luck, everybody, and stay strong.